respected dignitaries and dear audience, very good morning and a very warm welcome to the webinar on intellectual property rights in micro, small and medium enterprises. Thank you so much for joining the webinar. It's my pleasure and honor to moderate this session. I'm Dr. Rupesh Kaushik. We are having highly experienced and erudite speakers. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. Viraj Kishore Gupta. Dr. Gupta is the chief mentor at Giant Step and he is a social scientist and Indian leading keynote speaker. He is a senior column, columnist and a seasoned corporate trainer, widely respected in industry and academics for uplifting values. He has three decades of diverse experience in shaping young and professional mind. I would like to invite Dr. Gupta to give an introductory remark. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Professor Rupesh, for telling about me. Let me at the outset express a deep sense of gratitude to all the learned panelists. And I deem it my privilege to be speaking on behalf of FWA and also on behalf of Ford, because this important session is being organized under the aegis of both. While thanking the panelists, I must also welcome the students after all, the soul of this program lies among the students. As I speak on behalf of FWA, it is important to know that Federation of World Academics, that is FWA, is not-for-profit society dedicated to the cause of learning and education. The importance of FWA can be gogged from the objective that it has. And the objective is to create a peaceful, prosperous, and just society. All learned panelists would agree with me that there is a crying need to have such a society. Friends, FWA is a unique concept because it is an interface between academia and the corporate. We very well know that our students are found wanting in academic skills. And therefore, an organization like FWA has great relevance and great significance, especially when it aims at spreading light of knowledge to illuminate society and to motivate and inspire the students. If we want a better society, we have got to create them by, by empowering the youth in particular. In that context, FWA is doing a yeoman service by reaching out to academia as well as corporate bodies, not only in India, but across the world. It's a wonderful platform where corporates as well as academicians can come, share their views, share their knowledge, and be a source of inspiration to the youth. So from time to time, FWA organizes different events at regional, national, and international level through round table, through conferences, and the one that we are having is a classic example of that. It is equally important to remember that FWA is inspired by a sense of togetherness. It believes in sharing of knowledge and bringing the world on a common platform. So I, it's my privilege to be representing FWA this morning. It is very important to throw some light on Ford School of Management. It holds the prime of place as a B school, primarily because of its focus. If you see the name itself, that is Foundation for Organizational Research and Education, you'll all agree with me that there is a need for true research. Research which can promote authenticity, which can promote originality. And Ford as a B school is focused on building leaders of tomorrow. It offers AICT approved two years regular courses, 
students of this institution are like the brand ambassadors who are known for their corporate outlook and value system. So I express my sense of gratitude to Ford for his readiness to partner with FWA from time to time. Now, having formally welcomed you all, it is very important to remember a large number of students who are part of this event. What are we expecting out of this program? I want that we focus on the basic concept today. As the title suggests, intellectual property rights, it is important for us to explain in simple words. And I'm glad that we have legal eagles. I call them legal eagles because they are practicing people. They are not theoreticians. So they will be able to underline in simple terms concepts like intellectual property, rights, MSME. But I'm interested in underlining some points, and that is, why is the need for this kind of topic today? Why? Why are we talking about intellectual property? Friends, the word property has always mesmerized mankind right from ancient times. If I take you quickly to Vedic time, we had a concept, we had a concept like where, where we talked of four values and they were earth, calm, her and watch. Now, here also you see, 3000 years ago, we could not think beyond earth. So property was important even in the past. And even when we got independence, you will all be aware of the fact that right to property was a fundamental right. And thereafter now right to property is a constitutional right. So property per se, wealth per se, motivates people. But today we are here to talk about intellectual property right. What is intellectual property right? I was reading a definition by WTO. I like the definition by WTO, which says intellectual property rights are the rights given to persons over the creations of their minds. Let us understand the significance of this. Today is the age where we believe in promoting knowledge. It's information age. So the significance of a topic like intellectual property lies in the drive in the quest for knowledge, number one. Number two, when we call intellectual property right, basically it is an umbrella term, which refers to a set of assets which do not exist physically. And let us understand, because of the COVID situation, we also came to understand the importance of what is virtual. There was a time when we talked about real, and today we are talking about virtual being more real than real. So the significance of topic like intellectual property lies in this. Yes, intellectual property rights, a subject like this becomes important also because of the democratization that has taken place today. Democratization has resulted in a heightened sense of awareness among the people. Today we are well aware of our rights and duties. And intellectual property rights are important, especially in the context of MSME, because of the great significance that MSME have because they are like the pillars, they are like the backbone of our economy. And hence there is a need not only to safeguard the rights and the interest of the small business people, but also to promote them. And friends, you will all agree with me 
that today is the time when we talk about entrepreneurship. Today, when we talk about creating business for others, creating jobs for others, we all know the resolve of the government of India to become Atma Nirvar. So these are some of the considerations and factors which make a topic like this of great relevance. And this kind of topic becomes much more significant when we have when we have people from the industry, people who have had the first hand experience. They are no theoreticians. Yes, some of them are professors as well, but they are practitioners. They have been practitioners and by virtue of their first hand experience, they have been invited here to share their knowledge. So I consider it an honor to be introducing some of the eminent speakers today who would be educating and inspiring the youth on the topic called intellectual property rights. So let me begin with Professor Dr. Charanjit Kumar Sehgal. Dr. Sehgal has close to four decades of experience, four decades, almost the lifespan of four as a B school. Now, Dr. Segal has worked in different capacity in different sectors like petrochemicals, polymers, pharma sectors. He has had the experience of being associated with R&D. And he also has the first hand knowledge of interacting with the students. He understands what is missing today among the students. And no wonder he would be a great asset as a visiting faculty to some of the leading business schools. NMMIS is one of them. And Dr. Segal is also working as a managing partner, Segal IPR Services. So welcome, Dr. Segal. It is our proud privilege to have you there. So let's welcome Dr. Segal. Thank you very much. Now we have another eminent speaker this morning, and he is Mr. Vikas Ashwat. He is a qualified patent attorney and registered with Patent Office Government of India. He has had association with IIT Kharagpur. That is from where he got his professional qualification. He has. 11 years of rich experience and during which he has delivered close to 200 specialized lectures and have conducted training programs. He too is part of learned panel of many leading institutions including NIT Raipur. He is an expert in matter of patents, including PCT applications, consulting into foreign filing trademarks, convention application designs, copyrights. So he too has vast experience and exposure. Let's give a round of applause and welcome Mr. Vikas Ashwat. The third eminent speaker today is Professor Ganesh Hingamere. Professor Ganesh has had more than 200 publications of articles and research papers to his credit. 200. You can imagine and think of the efforts he must have put in. He is a postgraduate in law, having obtained PG degree from London and graduation LLB from Pune, that is ILS Law College. He is the founder of Great Mission Group Consultancy. If we talk about his extraordinary work, he has attended six ministerial 
conferences of the World Trade Organization WTO. That is certainly an achievement. You'll all agree with me. But what inspires me the most while going through his profile is his inspiration. He is inspired by the lines, and that is, we have miles to go before we sleep. An American poet. I don't want to get into poetry right now, but the inspire the inspiration shows the vision of a person. He has done so much, and yet he longs to do a lot more. That's the credibility, and that shows the character and 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 the guts of a person. So, welcome, Professor Ganesh. Let's give a round of applause. We are privileged to have you, sir. And. The last one among the eminent speakers today is Dr. Professor Rupesh Kumar. He looks very young, relatively, but, but, but looks are often deceptive. <laughs> My friends, he has had his doctorate from IIT Kanpur and has many published works to his credit. He has also qualified Net, something which is a dream of anyone who is aspiring to be an academician in our country. He visits institutions like I am Indore, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, and many more. He is a very dynamic professional who believes in taking up new roles and challenges. So now is the time for all the academicians to showcase and inspire our youth. So welcome Dr. Professor Rupes to this panel of discussion. With these words, I would like to conclude with one point and that is law makes sense when there is a provision to implement. This is one point that I would like all the eminent speakers to underline because we do have provisions to enforce the law. But there are always technical issues and glitches I would like you to focus upon so that our students can be inspired to, to start business. After all, the future of India depends only when our youth are inspired to create jobs for others. We have had enough of craving and striving for getting jobs. Time has come when we have to employ others. And there could not be a better platform than today to discuss and debate all these issues. With these words, I thank you and welcome you all once again and hand over to Professor Dr. Rupes. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Biraj, sir, for wonderful, comprehensive, very detailed, and very impressive introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, so the next one, one hour, we will decipher the significance of intangibles for success. Process. We will talk about trademarks. We'll see in case actually, if our panelists would like to present some case studies, we will take some case studies. Apart from that, we will also talk about geographical indication. We will also take some questions in between. Please feel free to write in the chat box. Let me take the opportunity to, in, uh, to encourage the discussion. So just, I would like to start with one quotation. It's not an exaggeration, exaggeration to state that IPRS are a matter of life and death. Specifically, when we are talking about pharmaceutical industry, life-saving drugs, this quotation becomes true. Need to contemplate where all of us as international agencies, countries, civil societies, businesses, business units, and individuals are. So uh, just our emphasis is on sustainable development as far as the entire mankind generally when we are going to talk about from the global perspective. And it is not the intergenerational equity which we are talking about, but apart from that, we are also concentrating on ethical. So in a longer term, generally we are going to find that there exists a win-win 
So there are multiple bottom lines which we need to take into consideration. There are societal issues which we need to address. There are biophysical environment which we need to take into consideration. And of course, we are talking about the financial bottom line, the economic aspect that is very much important since we need to bring down the poverty, we need to bring down the hunger, we need to improve the status of health. And generally, long back there was one slogan. Uh, we all, we all of us remember that growth with just. So that kind of equity generally, we are, we are actually, uh, we are in a process somehow actually to bring. So thereby actually we are going to increase or enhance the per capita income. So for the government, specifically when we are going to talk about the developing countries, specifically India, it won't be possible uh, to provide n number of employment to the growing multiple. So thereby there exists a need to emphasize entrepreneurial effort. And thanks to Modi's government, this government, since they have come up with different, different programs, like say Atal Innovation Yojana, Aat Nirbhar Bharat, Stand Up India, Start Up India, and specifically we need to rely upon micro, small and medium enterprises too, uh, because they are, they are actually providing employment to the large number of people. And basically for this, uh, this we need to develop a kind of ecosystem that is very much important. Unless and until institutions we are going to work on in work upon it, it won't be possible to nurture entrepreneurial activity. So IPR generally we are going to say that it is one of the critical elements, and we need to rely upon uh, that is actually an element of the startup ecosystem, the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial ecosystem. Now we know as far as intellectual property right, already it had been mentioned by uh, in detail, Dr. Gupta sir. So generally, some kind of legal authority we need to provide to new information as well as IDR. So that is actually it is going to affect the profitability of individual individual firms. It is also going to provide some kind of incentive so that they can create ideas. And we are coming up with large number of innovations. So again, actually, we are going to say that in case some kind of infringement, if it takes place, some kind of imitation, if it takes place, so definitely. Uh, it needs to be penalized. So that is required in order to motivate uh, the entrepreneurial. And in case actually, if the protection is weak from our part, from country's part, then in that particular case, we are going to lose the sale as well as the export. And in fact, there exists a kind of drift between the countries. So generally countries, if there exists a kind of weak, pro weak protection, countries generally they are threatened in order to have some kind of area. So, but again, actually, it is very difficult task uh, in order to provide protection. It requires probing at grassroots level. That is actually a challenge. And apart from that, there is also flip side, downside. That is, if we are going to provide protection to our ideas, then in that particular case, definitely we are going to find that the commodities which we are producing are in lesser number. And apart from that, it will also lead to higher price. So that is. That is actually the flip side. But again, actually, we need to provide protection in order to boost the entrepreneurial act. Now, there are certain key questions, and I would like to uh, I would like to raise those key questions. That is, what actually we need to protect? What should be protected? And what should be the mechanism of it? And who should monitor the working of the mechanism? So these are actually the crucial questions which we need to address. And by taking into consideration these questions. I would like to invite Professor Charanjit sir, who will shed light on the significance of IPR from business perspective. Welcome, sir. Now I am disappearing from the forum. The forum is all yours. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Your voice is your perfect. voice is not there. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is perfect. Uh, I would like to share screen. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to express my gratitude for the kind words of introduction by Professor Gupta. And he rightly said that there's a prime need to have a bridge between academics and corporates. That's a prime need, definitely. And FWA, I think, has a very, very vital role to play in this. As a matter of fact, just to begin with, I would like to say many academic uh, institutions, let us say CSIR, 
which is one of the biggest research and development activity in India, spending tens of crores, maybe hundreds of crores in generating IP. But look at the value of IP being generated by them. IP is also a product and product should be created for which there is a buyer. Not creating a product and this for the namesake IP. In that, I think FWA has a very, very vital role to play by making an understanding by academics what is the need of the industry, corporates. And accordingly, IP has to be generated. And to begin with, I would say one of the very initial contribution of IP at the time of, I think it goes to uh, 100 BC or something like that. First thing, contribution of IP is a English word to dictionary, English dictionary, that is monopoly. <laughs> monopoly word came into being because of IP concept, which is combination of two Greek words, monol means alone, polyne means sale, alone sale of a product which is created by a human intellect. Not going much because of the time constraint, I want to share my screen. I'm not able to say. Oh, and no, anyway. let's look at it. IP. When we go to IP, as we rightly said, it is an intangible asset. When you say it's an intangible asset, it is an asset that is not physical nature, such and the different types of IP are patent, brand, trademark, or copyright. Businesses can create and acquire intangible assets by different means, got licensing, etc. And some of the tangibles are definite, one are indefinite. I'll come to this later. Definite being trademark is something which can be for a number of years, whereas patents, they have got a fixed term. They are indefinite. And they are created by a company, do not appear to be on the balance sheet of the company, they being intangible. I give one example, like Professor Rupesh had rightly said, on which, on what aspects IP can be quiet and how it can be quiet. It is on the screen, but unfortunately, I'm sorry. Let us take a example of a camera. A camera has got a definite shape to look at physical appearance. One can certainly get an IP on design aspects of the camera, how it looks like. In India, there is a design registration which is for indefinite for 15 years, 10 years plus 5 years additional. Whereas in US, there is a concept of design patent where there is a protection of a design of a product. And second aspect of the camera is a trademark name. Let us take a Kodak camera, Sony camera, likewise. They are recognized by the name. You can get an IP on the name, trade name, in the form of trade name of a camera. Second is also the logo. And third is the technical features of the camera. If there is an additional technical feature on which you can get a patent, you can get a patent on the camera. So these are the, and then you write a literature on the camera, like uh, insert you put in the camera, uh, insert you put in the camera, like uh, write about the camera, you can get a copyright on that literal aspects of the camera for each camera. These are the four different aspects on which you can get IP for a product. Similarly, I am setting another example of a music center, CD player, let us say. Again, how it looks like, you can get a design a registration, are in US design patent, similar the name or that logo of the camera or that. Similarly, technical features, if at all there is any additional features related to technology, which is no one and invented on that, you can get a patent. These are the different aspects on which you can get a patent. Now, I would rather come to the main aspects of my today's talk, how they are useful in the business, corporate business. As audience today is primarily students who will the, who will the brand ambassadors, the corporates of future, they rather are the strong pillars initially for the corporate and on broader sense for the nation. And they are 
the one who has a very vital role to play in the success of any corporate or nation they are they represent. Let me give you one very simple example. I will rather giving with the live examples on these aspects. As and when some corporate want to acquire an IP, particularly for the brand, that is trademark, I would talk about. There's an example. Corporate has to be very certain with due diligence. What is the chances of getting it? Can we get it so fancy? As per the trademark law, it has to be in a specific class. There are 45 classes of trademark related to different business aspects. And one has to get trademark for specific class. As you know, Manik Chan is a very big brand of uh, Gurkha in India, worth thousands of crore, I would say. One of the person who was a rather technology point of view was responsible, was a contributor in developing a product for Manik Chan, Mr. X, I don't want to name. He rather wanted to part way for some differences and start his own brand telling my technology, I am the owner, I am the person, why not to have something on my own? As I'm not getting, I'm not satisfied with whatever is, whatever business relations he had with Manik Chan. He rather wanted to start a product is that it will be much better and he wanted to have a name of Johnny Walker. It is a beverage, Scottish beverage, and he on record says there is, it is not in that class in which this Gurkha comes, that is class 34. So he rather, prima facie is very, very confident I will get this brand. For that, he opened a business, new company, for which he appointed hundreds of distributors all over India, getting advance of them for the lakhs and collected crores of rupees. Because people knew he is the he is the he is the person who can do anything in this kind of a product. He has a technology. Do you know that there is one aspect popular brand? No matter whether that brand is in that specific class or not, being popular that is applicable and it is not something that one is definitely going to get that brand registered. On that aspect, they they ignored this aspect because of this ignorance. Manik Chan with Johnny Walker filed a case. The case went up to Supreme Court, and their application for brand was rejected, and they lost the business, opportunity for the business because they had not done the due diligence. That is one example I'm citing. And then I will give you another example which can be responsible for the downfall as well as at the same time for the uplift of the company, for the business. You know, Kodak is a big, big name in camera technology, Eastman Kodak. It is they who started in 1962, you know, uh, uh, their, uh, uh, their sales out of the selling of the films was more than one billion dollar and they had a workforce of 75,000. Gradually, gradually, you know, the digital camera which is in common use in today's era, it was first invented by a gentleman Steve Session who was an employee of Eastman Kodak itself. He was a working engineer at Kodak itself. It is who he who came up with the concept of digital camera. He presented the technology to the management. Management was so biased with their film. They said, if at all we come out with this, we will lose that business. Look, without realizing that their competitor might also be working on this technology. Initially, they rather found whatever the film quality was based on the film was not based on that digital technology and they somehow ignored this aspect. Do you know Kodak had to close down their 
film division only because they ignored this aspect future technology possibilities in that business despite the fact they were the main initiator of that technology identifying their technology they had a base with that base they put in the public domain that information in the form of patent we have got a patent and other company they provided as a base as professor gupta had white rightly said this is ipr which provides for the future innovation for the future development whatever kodak had done initially and had put in the public domain in the form of their ip from their ip concept was perceived by their competitors and they developed that technology and kodak had to close their camera business these are the two example one another example i will give you know nokia is a very popular name nokia had a real uh, i would say sat back in the business that closed down you know who came to the rescue the ip they had generated during their lifetime it is the ip who saved nokia and their asset which was intangible asset were up to that extent which saved nokia from going into solvency these are a few example now i would like to uh, uh, now i have to look at how to make use of ip for the as intangible assets in the interest of the business house that is monetization of the ip ip monetization as professor gupta had rightly said world trade organization has come out with an uh, agreement uh, with an agreement which is called the tips agreement that is that agreement provides a basis for wto member states to enact legislation in the respective member state for ip 27 article ensure that all member state have to respect ip of each member state in their specific jurisdiction for that reason they have said that there is a there are different ways by which of ip monetizations can be attained that is called licensing licensing first is out let's say like academics they can i will give some examples where you will realize this value of an ip is much much more than physical assets of any multinational company even i'll 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 come a bit uh, later you know is the out licensing all any academic institution who develop an ip which has sellable for which there is a buyer as i told you one has to develop for which there is a buyer is a product to be sold by an academic institution by exclusive and non exclusive exclusive means they give full rights to the buyer all the future ips out of this will be of the new buyer for all global jurisdictions they have the right to file wherever they want to file depends on the agreement secondly is non exclusive mean they have to give for specific purpose because ip of a patent is based on the claims which are there claims provide the scope of the technology for which it gives a protection for what specific scope they are licensing it out and also if at all ip is in multiple jurisdictions for what specific jurisdiction they are giving and likewise depend on the agreement that in licensing in licensing as professor gupta rightly said it is provides the base for future innovation in that specific technology i am rather very sad to say in india there is no concept of technology landscapes by corporates they say it's a waste of money is waste of time however this is a very strong base for the future generation of valuable ip from landscape one can ascertain the current status of the technology which is there in public domain but is has a freedom to operate it provides a base for anybody to use it for their further innovation since it's not enforceable either in the application stage not granted or patent though granted has not been maintained or as you know creation of any ip requires time 
manpower resource, material resource, and likewise. If we are having an IP which is enforceable but available for in licensing, and it provides you a base at much advanced stage of uh, technology than at the initial stage, and one can consider consider in licensing and work therefrom rather than working from very conceptual stage. Then is as you know, I told TRIPS Agreement Article Twenty Seven, which ensures licensing. Uh, which ensures protection. At the same time, TRIPS Agreement Article 31 provides a provision under Article 31 for compulsory licensing. They say there should not be a monopoly or barring others to use the technology only for that. Or it should not bar a state in an emergency not to use the technology which may impact the state adversely on uh, 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 on human basis i mean uh, 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 for the masses at large of that jurisdiction that member state for that there is a compulsory licensing provision and there has been some live cases and fourth is voluntary licensing voluntary voluntary licensing that the patent holder they know there is a danger in having a compulsory licensing for the technology for reason it is not complying with the rules laws of that specific jurisdiction to avoid that based on the mutual agreement they give voluntary license against the uh, certain terms and condition and another is infringement that let's not go into that i give a live example of compulsory license and also voluntary license as you know, there was a case in India of Naxalwar Madison, which Natco had uh, rather, uh, uh, Natco wanted to do Natco company in Hyderabad. They had tried their best to get a voluntary license from buyer for this product because the, the two primary factors of protection of a patent specific protection is that drugs in particularly, that drug should be available in that jurisdiction in enough quantity. 90% of the user must have an access to that drug. Second is, it should be at a price which is affordable by the common man in that jurisdiction. These are the primary two factors. And this product was being imported by buyer in India at that time. But even if it had been enough quantity, they would have had a protection under Article 27 of TRIPS Agreement. As the product was not available in enough quantity, at the same time, it was available at the much higher price, which was affordable in India. And NATO had said they will be able to provide this drug at a price which is 1 20th of that original price of the buyer. The matter went on to first the district, uh, this, uh, I, uh, this, uh, first is the Indian Patent Office. They have got a body that the intellectual uh, intellectual affiliate board ipb which has got a judicial power similar to district court or even high court any case relating to ipr has to be with ipb only after that it can be taken straight to the high court ipb had rather given a decision yes compulsory licensing should be granted to that court then the matter went up to the High Court. They also rather uphold the decision of IPB. Then it went to Supreme Court of India. Even Apex Court also uphold the decision. And Netco had to, uh, uh, buyer had to give this to Netco under compulsory licensing. If they had agreed by voluntary licensing, maybe they would have get, got a better price than whatever the court said to, uh, to uh, gave to them. That is five percent of the profit of the company which will be making. And there is a second example of a Gilead company of a product Sofo Vivian, which is a cancer product. They also rather was intelligent enough, unlike buyer, and they gave his voluntary licensing to so many companies as a result of which they could avoid compulsory licensing aspect in this thing. 
I think my time. Uh, I think it is uh, 15 minutes. Or sorry, I have taken both. I think I I finished my time. Uh, if you may kindly update me on that. Hello. Hello. Sir, it's very interesting to listen to you, sir. Is is, is it okay? Or I, I can continue. Or is there, because it's a 15 minutes. I was told. Yes. Yes. You can take uh, five. Four to five minutes more, if you if you would like to. Yeah, I more or less covered this this these aspects. First, I would like to make one point here. Yes, I'm please. Not, yes, please. Actually, as as far as literature actually talks about, generally yeah. we can use intent as collaterals. So the same idea you were talking about. In fact, the moment we are going to talk about the monetary. Which, which one? Which one you said? The collaterals. Collaterals. So generally, uh, would it be possible that we can what exactly is the scenario in India? Generally, when we are going to talk about that, we are using collaterals in order to finance or in order to base the finance. Uh, is this no, same? No, no, no. It's, it's not referring to that. Okay. Okay. No, it's not that. And no, okay. I will be rather only taking a few minutes uh, telling the value of the IPR. As I'm telling you, the value of IPR is much more than the physical value of assets. I'll just give one example of that. Few examples of that. Just I'll, I'll uh, this uh, getting. No, I'll give you one example. There was one patent of West Michigan University in US which was sold to Pfizer for $3.1 billion. Can you imagine? And similarly, I'm, to, I'm going to see my this uh, slide. And similarly, that many universities in US, they are getting tens of multiple of tens of uh, million uh, 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 revenue out of out licensing of their patents compared to whatever they are getting from federal government. And there are many examples uh, of that, which I'm not getting my, uh, I don't know, I'm not getting my those uh, info, uh, slides. Ah, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Yes, you know, as I told you, Northwestern University sold a patent on anti pelletic drug for $3.1 billion. Similarly, New York University has sold their patent for arthritis, Remicade drug for $1 billion, not million, billion. Similarly, Columbia University had sold their patents on Excel worth seven, $790 million. And likewise, the least price of the patent which, for which I have gathered information was by Florida universities for glaucoma drug for $260 million. Not only that, you see the royalties which the, uni the, the universities academics have been getting out of the selling their patent IP. Northwestern universities in 2004 figures I'm telling annual royalty was $361 million. And the least royalty they were getting was by Florida University that is $33 million. You see the value of this intangible property which is much much more than physical assets of many companies not all but many companies and i will then i would say monetization again in, in infringement cases there have been many cases <clears throat> particularly from us in india the infringement laws are not stringent as uh, mr vikas will agree with me there have not been many cases infringement cases in india but in us you know in 2019 apple was ordered to pay universities of wisconsin 506 million for patent infringement of A7 processor related technology. Similarly, in February 2019, Marvel Technology Group, 
they had to pay seven hundred million dollars to Carnegie Mellon University. There are so many cases like that. Also, even if you do not outlay censors, or you do not buy, but you can also rather capture information, identifying some potential infringers for your technology, and accordingly you can get. In uh, against infringement, lot of money, and as you know, since your patent is in public domain, and somebody knowingly that this information technology is public domain, as a somebody has got a proprietary right, is a willful infringement where the damages calculated are five times more than what actual damages it causes to the patent holder, and it was a willful infringement. Or in that court of uh, court has to decide. This indicates. What's the value of the IP, which prima facie we are ignoring, and there has there's a dire need to create awareness among Indian companies, particular MS, uh, 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 small companies and large companies, which they are trying to be penny by pound foolish by ignoring IP. And as I told you, technology landscape is being ignored. There has to be great emphasis. And the pillars which were the which form the audience of today's uh, webinar, it is they who have to create this awareness, and accordingly, accordingly make the company they work for a real, real uh, profitable business house, and nation as a whole is going to be benefited out of this. I hope that uh, ends my talk. In this is a topic which can be deliberated unabated, unabatedly for hours and hours together. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Chirinji. Really, very awesome, and uh, so much complex concepts you have elucidated in a very simplest. Thank you so much. My uh, Any question? I am there. Sir, we will take later on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just actually. Uh, like uh, I would like to mention here that uh, as an economist, even though IPRs are non-rival, despite we are providing protection, this will deteriorate the societal benefit. That is actually one of the case uh, or one of the issues to be addressed. Then apart from that, there therefore there there must be some timeline to protect any idea or invention, so that the society at a large they can also be benefited from that particular idea. And uh, similar is the case with respect to trademark. Yet protection is very much important. Provide some kind of incentives so that it is going to encourage the idea. Uh, this we will understand from Dr. Vikas sir. Sir, if possible, you can present some cases quite better understanding to all of us. Sir, what do you, Vikas sir? Uh, <coughs> sir, uh, actually, I am requested from Mr. Ajay to allow me to share the presentation. You can't share content unless the host or co-host or presentation presenter make you the presenter. So, sir, this message. Uh, can you ask Ajar to Ajar sir to allow me to? Ajar sir. Hello, Ajar sir. Can you hear us? Sir, it's sir, it's done. Okay, good. okay, sir. Okay, now now it is. Please check the share tab. Ah, now it is working, sir. Then it becomes. Ah, now it is visible. Coming. So, <clears throat> uh, sir, is it uh, visible to all participants? Yeah, 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 it is. Ah. Sir, make it a slideshow. Ah, it's I possible. Like it. Start from the beginning. We will try to cover within 15 minutes or as much we can. Sir, uh, are you able to see the first slide, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, trademark and domain name issues in Indian context. Yes. Okay. Is it visible, sir? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay sir. So, uh, uh, Segal sir has informed us about the value of the patent and how the foreign uh, counterparts are taking advantage of the uh, pa uh, patent in innovation and monetizing it. Even the universities are so much uh, you can say aware about their rights, and uh, the uh, the rights are enforced very well in in very planned manner. But in India, we are still struggling uh, the implementation issues uh, due to one or another reason. So now uh, I will focus on the trademark issues that are arising in, in, in India and how an, an entrepreneur can learn 
from these uh, these issues then how he, he should take decision while promoting a product or branding a product okay so uh, <coughs> for regarding trademark i just wish to convey that it is just it's any graphical representation can be a mark any graphical even if you put a cross sign if you put a right sign it can be a mark uh, so I'll just give an example uh, can you identify the mark brand yes okay uh, yes sir please brand rupesh sir can you can you name the brand Nike. Nike. It's a Nike. So even without reading the Nike, you are able to identify it's a Nike. So that's why any graphical representation can be a mark. That is the ideology. So Joby Kapka graphical representation hoga, who trademarkly consider hoga, provided it is capable of distinguishing your product or service from another. So it's a very strong protection. But you as a marketing professional, you know it's not a single day game. It's a game of 20, 30 years marketing that the people are recognizing a right side as a Nike brand. So, but still uh, the analogy is true that the any graphical representation can be a mark. Uh, this, is a, this is a plain package drinking water. It is suppose ye kutub institutional area mein ye sell karne ke liye koi, koi sell trader de hai. So most of you are reluctant to buy this product. Though it is though it is ISO certified, though it is by following the BS standard, it is clean water, but you are not ready to buy it. It's a costing or as a quality or as a better than you can purchase. Now, what do you do with the vendor? You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't Then your, your, your purchasing capacity will differ. So, what do you do with the vendor? You can't do it. You can't do it. Standard, they have put in the company. You see only the brand, and that is a you see, Malawi, a purchase percentage of 25 percentage of the label. Up near a fixed PI, it says a value barchuka. One second, sir. So, 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 this is one second, sir. But what people are doing in the market? Sir, Rupesh sir, are you coming? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead, 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 sir. People are trying to to cover the goodwill of other. They are trying to enjoy the goodwill of other. आप लोग को जल्दी में है railway station पे है train bus stand पे है airport पे है घर जल्दी जाना है आप लोग ढंग से देख भी नहीं पाओगे. You are we are the man of imperfect recollection. We 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 read in complete in total, not in parts. हम एक-एक line word नहीं पढ़ते हम लोग. हम लोग एक हमारे mind में image होता है कि ये word इस तरह का दिखता है ये logo इस तरह का दिखता है. So that's the advantage there the infringer are taking. Bisley being a big, big group, <coughs> wo urban area mein to kuch apne enforce kar sakte hai. Lekin rural, rural area mein na to police ka pura uh, intijam hota hai. To bhoot sari issues hota hai. To yeh is tarah ke issues trademark mein kaafi bade hota hai, jo we being a corporate should avoid. Aisa nahi ke Equafin is a established brand or aap Equafin is start kar do bhai. Ke ta, thik hai, ek spelling ka difference hai. So those analogy are not acceptable as per the trademark act, as per, as per the High court orders. Okay. So these two should be taken care by the corporate. Ab, <clears throat> now see uh, an example regarding uh, Dettol and Deuto. So, uh, abhi kuch time pehle pandemic ka situation arise wata dho saal se pandemic chal raha hai. And government has regulation that you should wash your hand frequently whenever you go to a new place or a new, you are meeting a new person. You should wash the hand. Or aap koi food consume karo, usse pehle wash karo, jo bhi whatever it is. So one company from Uttar Pradesh, uh, what they had done, they started Devtol, D-E-V-T-O-L, Devtol, which is much similar to Dettol. Only one spelling difference is there and the logo is almost similar, the green color and the background. So ultimately the court went to the Delhi High Court and, and the defendant was injected that they cannot continue the, the brand. 
and uh, their penalty were given and uh, like that but ultimately what they did they started the new brand devtizer so this is the power of the trademark registration once you register the mark you can <clears throat> you can you, you can put a pressure on the defendant to change your mark so that your your good will become intact varna kya hoga aap log devtol purchase kar layenge aur pata chalega ki iska quality inferior hai aur aap bina dekhe ho sakta devtol pe karenge nahi they are they are now they are supplying inferior goods so these types of issues are there in the trademark which need to be added so jo bhi mba professionals jo pad rahe hain jo study wo ye nahi soche ki theek hai hamara spelling thoda change kar diya now we can launch the product so this this is not the right <coughs> आप लोग में से कुछ लोग गुड्स में भी जाएंगे फूड प्रोडक्ट्स में भी मैनेजर बनेंगे तो एक मुंबई हाई कोर्ट का एक वर्डिक्ट आया था पार्ले वर्सेज फ्यूचर कंज्यूमर लिमिटेड <coughs> तो यहां देखिए यू कैन सी हियर मोनेको पार्ले एंड फ्यूचर ग्रुप द प्रोडक्ट इज क्रैको हियर हाइड एंड सीक डिफेंडेंट इज पी कपू सी कैन पिक ओके क्रैक जैक क्रैकर किंग एंड एंड इफ यू रीड इट द सेम पैकेजिंग स्टाइल same font style same color combination same biscuit shape why it is not a coincidence so court ne kya bola tha similarity in the rival packaging labels cannot be a matter of coincidence to aapka good faith bhi nahi ban raha jahan par agar ek if one product was infringing that you can ask for good faith but in the series three products are infringing you cannot say it's a, it's a, it's not a deliberate okay so aapko cheez dhyan rakhni hai you should be a smart manager but you should not break the law aapko rasta nikalna hai kuch dusra tarika apnana hai long term it may harm your company okay so ye fir injection hua now it is difficult to put aapko sare label gayab karne distributor ko samjhana hai ki bhai hamara product change ho gaya tha court ne case kar diya tha to court mein case chal gaya tha to now he will be matlab usko thoda to lagega ki now should i continue the business with the with the people uh, to, tomorrow again new issue may arise so keeping your goodwill intact is very important in the business and that's why the, for the trademark also <clears throat> so ek chhota sa suggestion hai in the trademark uh, when you are adopting a trademark try to adopt a distinctive mark ab kuch log kya karte big bazaar start kar diya sab shaadi.com start kar diya ab shaadi.com se pata chal raha hai bhi ek matrimonial website hai that is related to marriage bureau big bazaar se you can identify it's related to something related to some uh, uh, market where numerous products are available in a single roof sweet corner se you can identify it's a sweet shop so ye is tarah ke mark ko avoid karna hai ab theek hai that's a different story ke ye famous ho gaye so that's a but big bazaar cannot is, uh, stop me from opening the smart bazaar because bazaar is to come to trade i am using the another traffic what you should promote you should promote words like zomato swiggy code because these are quite distinctive you cannot you cannot correlate zomato with the food matlab abhi aap correlate kar le ki uska meaning zomato ka food product se nahi nikal raha so we have to select those words which don't which does not have any correlation with the product wo that are the best mark theek hai na to ye dhyan rakhna hai aapko uh, jaise ki lakme flipkart uh, flipkart swiggy exxon पेपर फ्राई ओ एल एक्स ये मार्क या फिर आर्बिटेरी मार्क हो एप्पल फॉर कंप्यूटर एप्पल इज ए फ्रूट बट यू आर यूजिंग फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक आइटम सो आर्बिटरी असाइन चेरी फॉर पॉलिश सो दो मार्क्स आर आल्सो गुड सो वेन एवर यू अडोप्ट मार्क सी द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ट्रेड मार्क्स वट आर द बेस्ट सुटेबल अवॉइड डेस्क्रिप्टिव वर्ड डेरी बेस्ट टेस्ट ट्रीट पिज्जा हट उसका पिज्जा हट है तो मेरा पिज्जा शोर पिज्जा महल हो जाएगा मेरा कोई दिक्कत नहीं आई कैन यूज द वर्ड पिज्जा सो ट्राई टू try to put your mark as distinctly as you can to 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 get the maximum guarantee right or kuch some arguments i can tell you how the arguments you can succeed uh, one uh, foreign company registered their trademark in india forbot so what the trademark registry uh, means unhone kya citation diya cited mark conflict marks kya bataye robot robot and robot only the difference of one word and phonetic is almost similar theek hai but what was the argument robot is a coined word but robot is a dictionary word so aap argument kis line pe karna hai wo bhi dekhna hai aap not only easily that's why this today seminar you being a manager you should have a knowledge plus in case of any problem you can contact with corresponding authority 
दिस इज नो नीड ऑफ कई बार ऐसा होता ना हम लोग अरे मुझे ज्यादा पता है नो नो यू शुड कॉन्टेक्ट सम कंसर्ट प्रोफेशनल इफ रिक्वायर्ड सो दोस एटीट्यूड शुड बी साइमल्टेनियसली डेवलप्ड इन द प्रोफेशनल्स अब एक छोटा सा केस है टाइम थोड़ा लिमिट है पिज्जा हट और पिज्जा कट अब नॉट एवरीथिंग इज ओके लेकिन मेलाफेटिन टेंशन कहां पर है द घर के घर के ऊपर जो हट बनाया ना हट व्हाई ही चोज टू पुट हट ऑन द घर आप देखिए रेड पे तो कोर्ट जहां पर देखता है कि आपका इंटेंशन मेलाफाइड नहीं है इंडिया में ट्रेडमार्क इन्फ्रिजमेंट में जेल इंप्रिजमेंट का ऑलमोस्ट कोई केस रिपोर्टेड नहीं है अभी तक क्यों क्योंकि कोर्ट भी सोचता है ठीक है यार गिव हिम अपॉर्चुनिटी इसकी भी फैमिली है इतने से छोटे से कमर्शियल मेटेरियल किसको डाले इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट लेकिन यहां पर कोर्ट देखता है कि आपका इंटेंशन क्या है तो उन्होंने देखा कि पिज्जा खरीज ओके पिज्जा तो कोई भी यूज कर सकता है उनका हट है आपका घर है बट वाई डू वाई यू पुट द हट स्ट्रक्चर अबाउ घर वाट वॉज यूर इंटेंशन सो यू सी दर्डिंग द अटैचमेंट ऑर्डर वुड कंटिन्यू टिल द डिफरेंट चेंज अ रेस्टोरेंट नेम टू समर नेम नो डिसेप्टिव टू सिमिलर टू पिज्जा हट और एक आप उनका वर्डिंग देखिएगा ऑल दो दर्ड घर इन हिंदी माइट नॉट बी द एक्जेक्ट ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द वर्ड हट it could be construed as equivalent of the same when written inside a hard device to inhone hard device ke andar jo ghar likha na to that was that become a problem to them aur ye kya hua tha franchisor aur franchisee ka issue tha jo franchisee alag hua tha baad mein usne business start kiya to he cannot deny i was not aware about the pizza hut business so smart kai bar hota na hum log smart bante bante itne smart ho jate hai ki we have to hame piche jana padta hai us तो ये आजकल जो थोड़ा सा वो हो रहा है कि थोड़ा सा कि नो आई विल डू लाइक दिस वी शुड ट्राई टू डू समथिंग इन द विद इन द लॉ तो एक छोटा सा एग्जांपल दे रहा हूं आपको डोमेन नेम का makemytrip.com जो काफी बड़ा डोमेन नेम है इंडिया में और पहले यूएस में स्टार्ट हुआ था फिर इंडिया में आए लोग ठीक है एनआरए से नाउ दे स्टार्टेड विद ओके टाटा बाय बाय डॉट कॉम लेकिन उनको पता नहीं था कि इसमें एक टाटा वर्ड भी आ रहा है अब टाटा तो हमारे नॉर्मल सेंस भी है ओके टाटा है सर ओके सर मीट मीट नेक्स्ट टाइम तो हम लोग टाटा को एक सेंस में यूज करते हैं फॉर बाय बाय पर्पस फॉर सीइंग ऑफ सम लेकिन हियर टाटा इनफैक्ट इज अ बिग कंग्लोमरेट बिग कंपनी तो जब भी पीपल वर सर्चिंग टाटा दे वर लैंडेड अप विद द फर्स्ट डोमेन नेम ओके टाटा बाय डॉट कॉम क्योंकि ट्रैवल वेबसाइट है ना कितनी बार हिट होगा पहले चेक करोगे प्राइस फिर बुक करोगे फिर कैंसिल करोगे फिर एडिट करोगे फिर कंपेयर करोगे ना हम लोग होटल हम लोग एयरपोर्ट का टिकट बुक कराने के लिए पांच बार तो चेक कर लेते हैं तो वो उसका हिट इतना बड़ा हो गया कि सर्चिंग फॉर टाटा लैंडेड अप विद ओके टाटा बाय बाय डॉट कॉम सो अल्टीमेटली वेन टू द आर्बिट्रेटर तो द नेम वाज ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम द मेक माई ट्रिप टू टाटा सन्स तो क्या मीन्स आपका इंटेंशन मोनोफाइड है बट यू हेव टू चेक द लो तो वी हेव टू चेक द लो ऑफ लाइफ तो ये कुछ स्ट्रेटेजिकल इश्यूज है जो एज ए मैनेज मैनेजमेंट यू शुड नो फिर कुछ कभी कभी आप लोग यू शुड कभी कभी आपको कई बार आपको समझौता भी करना पड़ता है यू टू अलाई लाइक स्टार बक्स कॉफी और सरदार बक्स कॉफी सो नाउ सरदार बक्स उन्होंने थोड़ा सोचा कि यार व्हाई शुड आई पुट इनटू द ट्रबल उसने बोला ठीक है आई विल चेंज टू सरदार जी बक्स तो आपको शायद मुझे लगता है भूगल साइड एरिया में शायद इनके आउटलेट भी है अपने साउथ डेली में तो कभी कभी आप यू कैन यू कैन मीन आर्बिट्रेट यू कैन सेटल द मैटर बिकॉज कोर्ट प्रोसीडिंग्स में टाइम भी काफी लगता है और अगर आपकी अगर आपके फंड ज्यादा नहीं है तो वो सामने वाला तो बहुत बड़ा लीगल एजेंसी हायर करके हाई कोर्ट में पेनल्टी लगवा सकता है आपको तो कई बार आपको दोनों तरफ से सोचना है कि हाउ आई कैन सेटल द मैटर यू शुड ऑलवेज ओपन फॉर सेटलमेंट अगर आपको लॉस नहीं हो रहा तो नाउ दिस इज दीन नाउ स्टार बक्स डजेंट है एक अब मैं एक इम्पोर्टेंट फैक्ट्स पे आता हूँ आपके पास मैं बहुत जल्दी जल्दी लूंगा शायद टाइम का मेरे को थोड़ा देखना पड़ेगा लेकिन मैं बस पांच मिनट लूंगा दो प्लेस पर मैं तीन सात चार मिनट या फिर गणेश सर को भी कहीं शायद दूसरा ज्वाइन करना है बी एमडब्ल्यू और डीएमडब्ल्यू अब हुआ क्या ओम बालाजी ऑटोमोबाइल्स अपने गाजियाबाद में इनका कॉर्पोरेट ऑफिस है तो इन्होंने स्टार्ट किया देश और मोटरवर्क डीएमडब्ल्यू और विद लोगो ऑफ एबी मतलब ओ बी है ओम बालाजी ऑटोमोबाइल्स का लोगो था साथ में लेकिन कोर्ट ने फिर भी इनके अगेंस्ट में ऑर्डर दिया बोला कि दो यू आर इन ई रिक्शा मार्केट बीएमडब्ल्यू इज ऑन हाई सेगमेंट कार मार्केट लेकिन डीएमडब्ल्यू वाज ऑन ई रिक्शा मार्केट और ई बाइक मार्केट फिर भी कोर्ट ने बोला कि बीएमडब्ल्यू का इतना गुडविल रेपुटेशन है कि इफ यू स्टार्ट डीएमडब्ल्यू सम पीपल माइट थिंक दैट बीएमडब्ल्यू इज ऑन द दिस ई रिक्शा सेगमेंट मार्केट 
सो ट्रेडमार्क में काफी कुछ देखा जाता है कितनी गुडविल है अभी ये कंपनियां चल रही है पहले मोटरसाइकिल आई फिर कार्स आई तो पीपल आर सो फ्यूज मतलब यूज टू दर्ड बी एमडब्ल्यू कि वो डी एमडब्ल्यू को भी कंफ्यूज कर सकते हैं तो यहाँ पर बेनिफिट बी एमडब्ल्यू को मिला तो जो लोग इस तरह का ध्यान रखें बिल्कुल प्रोडक्ट लॉन्च करने से पहले अदरवाइज इट्स अ लॉन्ग वे तो कुछ किसी एक अबोहर पंजाब में समवन स्टार्टेड विद द अपना बजाज स्टोर एक्सीलेंट एक्सीलेंट अपना बजाज स्टोर उनका नाम था गौरव बजाज अब उन्होंने क्या सोचा कि मेरा सर ने बजाज है तो चलो लेट मी स्टार्ट विद द बजाज अपना बजाज स्टोर अब लेकिन इन्होंने क्या गलती करी नीचे क्या लिख दिया पावर्ड बाई बजाज अब जहां पर पावर्ड बाई बजाज आप देखोगे वाट यू थिंक क्या इट्स इट्स एंड्रोज बाई बजाज कंपनी आइर दी फ्रेंच आउटलेट फ्रेंच इज समिंग लाइक दिस तो फिर कोर्ट फिर कोर्ट ने मना किया भाई बंद करो इसको और फिर ये भी बोला कि अपना बजाज डॉट स्टोर डॉट कॉम ये भी वेबसाइट आपकी यू शुड डिसकंटिन्यू तो कारण क्या था बजाज काफी बड़ा ट्रेडमार्क है और आई थिंक सिक्सटी से चल रहा है ठीक है तो ये कुछ फैक्ट्स होते हैं फिर अगर आप लोग फैशन डिजाइनिंग में है तो एच एंड एम और एच एम मेगा ब्रांड तो एच एंड एम इज ए बिग ब्रांड पहले स्वीडन में था फिर नॉर्वे फिर यूके पूरी दुनिया के बाद इंडिया में आया इंडिया में टू में रजिस्ट्रेशन करवाया लेकिन ऑनलाइन प्रेजेंस पहले से था कोर्ट है और इंडिया में फिर दूसरे ब्रांड एच एम मेगा ब्रांड ने अप्लाई किया तो एच एम मेगा ब्रांड में हसी मर्चेंट उन्होंने अप्लाई किया कि सर माय नेम इज हसी मर्चेंट माय माय कलीग नेम इज हमजा मर्चेंट जो डायरेक्टर से तो दैट्स व्हाई एडॉप्टेड एच एम और दूसरा उन्होंने बोला कि हमने मेगा ब्रांड भी लगाया ठीक है कोर्ट कोर्ट ने कोई सपोर्ट नहीं किया उनको इंजेक्शन दिया बोला कि पीपल विल कंफ्यूज आप देखिए स्क्रीन पे आप एच एन एम और एच एम कितना माइनर डिफरेंस है और जब स्टोर पे लगेगा तो ऐसा दिखेगा यस तो तो जो लेट आए उनको उनको मना किया गया यू कैन नॉट कंटिन्यू तो जब भी आपको मार्क को लॉन्च करना है तो वी डू डू डिलीजेंस करिए अदरवाइज आप जब उसको उसको वापस विड्रॉ करेंगे तो इट विल बी टू लेट तो ये सब कुछ केसेस हैं जो आपको ध्यान में रखनी चाहिए जो आपको स्ट्रेटेजी बनानी चाहिए अकॉर्डिंगली है ना और कुछ एक दो केसेज और मैं आपको एक केस बता दो बुक माई शो और बुक माई इवेंट यहाँ पर बुक माई इवेंट को रिलीफ मिला क्यों मिला क्योंकि बुक माई इज कॉमन टू ट्रेड बुक माई शो बुक माई टिकट बुक माई रेस्टोरेंट बुक माई बुक माई क्लासेस बुक माई राइड तो अगर आप कॉमन वर्ड यूज करें तो आपको रिलीफ मिलेगा क्योंकि बुक नाउ दे कंपेयर शो विद इवेंट और कोर्ट ने भी बोला देखिए लोगों पर डिफर कर रहा है तो इसीलिए मैं कह रहा हूँ कि स्ट्रेटेजी के साथ साथ आपको एक लीगल एडवाइस लेते रहिए अगर आपको लगता है इट्स रिक्वायर्ड वहां पर आपके तीस चालीस पचास हजार रुपये खर्च हो सकता है लेकिन हो सकता है आपको लाखों के नुकसान से बचा लो ओके तो मतलब बी केयरफुल और फिर ये एक लास्ट केस है फिर मैं क्लोज डाउन करूंगा ऑक्सीज और ऑक्सीकुल यहाँ पर कॉमन वर्ड ऑक्सी था बट ऑक्सी इज कॉमन फॉर डिनोटिंग ऑक्सीजन विच इज एबंड इन वाटर तो कोर्ट ने बोला कि ऑक्सीज एंड ऑक्सीकुल आर डिफरेंट बिकॉज ऑक्सी इज कॉमन टू ट्रेड तो जहां पर अगर कोई कॉमन टू ट्रेड वर्ड है तो वहां पर आप थोड़ा सा मैनेज कर सकते हो फिर भी मैं कहूंगा एडवाइस इज मैंडेटरी टू टू अवॉइड द फ्यूचर लॉसेस ये मेरा एडवाइस है आप मतलब इट्स अप टू यू टू एक्सेप्ट नॉट बट यू शुड टेक प्रॉपर एडवाइस बिकॉज आपको चार पांच साल तक विद्रो करना बहुत मुश्किल हो जाएगा सर वो आया था ना कुछ सीमेंट का एडवर्टाइजमेंट आता था कि भी ये बन गया है बांगड़ सीमेंट समथिंग लाइक दिस आई नॉट तो वो <laughs> उन्होंने तो करोड़ रुपए खर्च कर दिए सर हर कोई थोड़ी कर सकता है तो वी हैव टू सी द ग्राउंड रियलिटी देन वी शुड एक्ट सो दिस इज द दिस इज दिलीबेशन थैंक यू सो मच सर विकास सर थैंक यू सो मच वेरी इंसाइटफुल in fact you have touched the area which i was looking at very well explain the kind of deception uh, which is prevailing and uh, sir i would like to bring in your notice one case long back when i was studying in ninth standard relating to beverages so one brand was there uh, right now i think it is also there that is diplomat it is manufactured by herbertson one distillery and another distillery i identified during that time period Had produced a liquor by the same name, Diplomat. But apart from that, one uh, one amendment actually it was there. That is with respect to a small icon of Cox he has made uh, underneath to in order to mislead the customers. So definitely, I think that particular case we are going to say that it is a kind of malefied intention. No, sir. In actually, when you are in ninth class, I think you think that around ninety six, ninety seven, eight, ninety eight, ke baat hogi lagbhag. तो हो yes. हो सकता सकता है पॉसिबली वो होनेस्ट कॉन्करेंट यूजर का भी हो सकता है पर तो दैट वी नीड टू लुक इनटू मतलब दिल्ली में एक शॉप हो सकती है अग्रवाल मिस्टान और हो सकता है वो नागपुर में भी हो और बहुत रनिंग फॉर ट्वेंटी इयर्स 
तो वो एक इश्यू कई बार हो जाता है तो देट नी नीड टू बी लुक इन टू तो एक होनेस्ट कौन करेंट यूजर का भी एक क्लोज है देट वी कैन डिस्कस लेकिन बस मेरे को लगता है पहले गणेश सर का पहले कम्प्लीट हो जाए तो फिर वो देखें ही कैन लीव फॉर अनदर सेशन so one aspect i would like to touch here that uh, if the same product is produced at two different geographical location then how we can position it? that is also one of the critical issue i would like to point one thing as oh, uh, mr vikas has rightly said that every time one has to take a legal opinion before going ahead with the any any uh, world market trademark the case which i presented their attorney had told them please go ahead since there is no relationship with the business for with the trademark is there jani waker visa visa what you are going to do <laughs> and there after having sought and legal opinion from uh, from uh, very competitive advocates they decided to go ahead with the business and it could not be protected because of same concept as dr vikas mr vikas has said popularity so many times even attorneys are rather not very very clear in their uh, advice and uh, it causes this kind of things there is a live example that we went up to supreme court and it could not be protected <laughs> well actually it is a it is an evolving field so it won't be possible for yeah, them yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, i give you one example of very popularity you remember once it happened in japan went to a restaurant and were feeling thirsty asked the guy can we have a cold drink please he started staring what we are asking for here oh can we complete yes sir <laughs> look at the <laughs> value of a <the> brand <laughs> look at the value of the brand <laughs> yes so just actually one more critical issue we would like to explore that is if the same product is produced produced at two different location geographical location then how we can position them so our business students generally they are keen to know and to understand this but i would like to invite our esteemed professor ganesh sir sir over to you thank you very much kaushik sir uh, dignitaries gupta sir and uh, fwa uh, i think the time is very less uh, but i don't know uh, we may have to extend 5 to 10 minutes it depends on this and kindly allow me to share very few slide uh, i think uh, not that allowed to share my few slides uh, now okay this is again actually you have to press the share button i think it's yeah it's fine actually let me click so it's it's is uh -huh. it now yes uh, okay uh, without taking much of the time we all uh, know that what is intellectual property right okay. but and my today's uh, area of discussion is uh, uh, on geographical indication however i just wanted to touch uh, in very quick manner a very very quick manner that the recent review of submitted to to uh, parliament government of india a uh, couple of months ago where you will find uh, the scenario uh, is uh with respect to the patent which is not right now my domain but i'll just finish in 30 seconds uh china is filing 14 lakhs plus uh patent application per year however india is 56 out of 56000 uh, uh you will find 40000 by indians and uh, sorry 16000 by indians and 40000 uh, by the non resident applicants so the ratio is 1 1200 uh, per month is to 1 lakh 20000 with respect to uh, china's filing that is where we are on patent similar on trademark 78 lakhs by china uh, 3 lakhs by 34000 for india so 24000 uh, patent per day is china uh, sorry per 24000 trademark per day china is filing and rs is 1000 so one is 24 this is what our neighbors this things and now i'm immediately jump to my area this is another report Uh, finding from the same IPR review reports where we haven't registered or uh, uh, in in last year a single geographical indication. However, if you see uh, the China's contribution in geographical indication registration is seven thousand five hundred plus. This is two thousand eighteen report, but if you see the recently they have filed more than four hundred GIs. So this is 
the GI's contribution uh, uh, in China is 7,500. European uh, uh, Union uh, registered more than 59,000. Germany alone, they have 15,000. However, ours means from India, we have hardly three, 370 GI registration. Out of that, the uh, agriculture GI registration is hardly 112. And I had an opportunity to register 25% of the total agri GI registration in India. So I feel happy and proud to be that. Now let's come to the commercialization. Today's uh, main discussion is uh, uh, IPR in MSME, main, mainly on uh, industrial perspective. Let me talk to my topic about the geographical indication. Geographical indication is an intellectual property right. This is first submission. Second, this is community's intellectual property right. Unlike your patent and trademark, this is not an individual intellectual property. This is community's intellectual property. So community may be a farmer, weaver, artisans. They can get this property and rightly said by Gupta sir and by letter by all panelists that uh, this intellectual property uh, uh, can be owned by you and Pajesh and, and the monopoly word, etc, cetera, etc cetera, discussions. I'm not going to do uh, go into deep and that. So this is community intellectual property. So if you have a unique product, uh, maybe an agri unique product like a Darjeeling tea, so you'll get a geographical indications. I have registered Mahabaleshwar strawberry, Nashi grapes, Patani sari, Puneri pagdi. So there are fortunately I have had an opportunity to work for the 37, including the uh, 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 product from the Kashmir and also product from the West Bengal and uh, mainly work for the Maharashtra for the many GI registrations. And the, but unfortunately, the registration is very less. And I'm coming to the point here, how GI is really uh, utilized or, or commercially exploited by the European Union. This is a, a report from the European Union where you'll find uh, their sale value for 2020. Even during the pandemic, the GI sale value of the European Union, you can see, is 75 billion euros. And further, you will find 15 billion euros alone they have generated from the export of the GI product. So, for an example, champagne from the France received the geographical indication and today the champagne is available all over the world. So they commercially exploited the, their GI in a first class manner. So 90% of the champagne is now exported, whatever they produce, almost 90% of the champagne they are exporting to the other nations. So even uh, we can take an example of uh, India's win and at World Cup. So when we uh, when we were celebrating our victory, Tendulkar also used that champagne. So that's how they have promoted their GI. Uh, then Scotch whiskey is again another example from the Scotland. Received the GI and now 90% of their product is uh, exporting. What does it mean by exporting? They are getting the foreign exchange. Once you have foreign exchange, what we can say, your country is one of the one of the economically strongest country you can consider. The similar thing uh, replicated in India through uh, Darjeeling tea, our 60% of the total production is exported. Exported. Mere export is not an ultimate aim, but the protection of the culture, protection of the tradition, creating an employment, revenue to the state, those are also important aspects attached to the geographical indication. When we say this is community's intellectual property, right? Community upliftment is required so when you get the say uh, community involved in that you you'll be rewarding with them a premium price then domestic market and etc 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 so again uh, uh, i'm i'm touching with the international scenario geographical indication act be enacted because of the wto strips agreement and because of that uh, 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 you can see uh, a platform is available for us uh, to uh, enter into the WTO's member countries market, and that is what we have done with the Darjeeling tea. But unfortunately, I re repeatedly saying the GI registration is very less uh, uh, in as compared to the other countries, like what I've shared here with China, with European Union, and uh, their sell value. We even not touch even not not one percent need to be exploited, and many SMEs, many SMEs uh, can be. Churned you know, created on that. Uh, basically, I have registered the Golovar Chiku. I can share only two, three examples over here. The Golovar Chiku from the Dahanu, I have registered as a GI. And today you will find Chiku powder, Chiku chips, Chiku wine and Chiku parlors are established there in 
uh, Goldwood area in Dahan. So these are the small three, four SMEs has been created with one GI. A similar example I can say about the Kesher Mango, uh, which I have registered from the Maratwada, and uh, now there are pulp process units established in the Maratwada region. So that is another example. Third example, which I can quote is a Kokum, that is uh, scientifically known as a Garcinia Indica. And uh, we, we have registered and they, there are certain companies which are extracting the HCA, hydroxycytric acid, which is which is basically uh, uh, a natural ingredient for the weight loss and tablets are prepared and those are exported. So these are the uh, few example I have 30 plus example, but uh, just summarizing with very quickest possible manner that how GI is important. GI, what can be registered as a GI? Third, uh, uh, how we have enacted GI. Fourth, what is the GI status in India? And one of the aspect of the uh, intellectual property right here is uh, through the OECD uh, finding that how uh, 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 an improvement can be happened to your nation with uh, uh, intellectual property right here and this IPR review report to this submitted to the government where you'll find even 1% increase in the trademark will increase the 3.8% of the FDI. Even 1% improvement in the patent will increase of 2.8% of the FDI and 1% improve, improvement in the copyright protection will increase the 6.8%. This is not actually my area, but my concern is to just uh, very quickly uh, tell about the geographical indication and uh, that is what I wanted to say. What we did it is very important here in IIT Kharagpur when uh, I was invited to launch a patent drive and GI drive. We started on that, and then of course patent drive successfully driven and rightly said by the Segal sir. Uh, how uh, developed countries are taking uh, the benefit, how the big universities are get, getting the benefit of the patent, etc. I'm not going to touch. But the GI, we have launched this in 2016, and thereafter, uh, Rasagullah from the Odisha is registered as a GI. And today you'll find this Rasagullah is available many part of in India and also exported. So uh, this entire speech and the entire retail is available on YouTube. If someone click on Google and geographical indication or my session at IIT Hanpur, then entire 45 minutes uh, detailed description. Why, why we should fight among ourselves? Why we should fight between two states, West Bengal and the Odisha? We can have a separate GI. We should not waste our energies on that. The, G, the GI from the West Bengal was uh, uh, given to the different uh, Rashagulla and another from the Odisha. The similar thing happened with the West Bengal. There are three mangoes also registered as a geographical indication with 40, 40 kilometers difference. So you just have to uh, 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 give a difference between the two product and we can have one single state, maybe a thousands of GI. So we may have 30,000 in future if we go in deep. And there are three categories. There are three types of goods can be registered as a geographical indication. Number one, agriculture GI, I have already mentioned. And again, for agriculture GI, there are five elements. Number one is soil. Number two is water. Number three is environment. Number four is natural resources. And number five is your human skin. So for an example, I have registered the strawberry. Uh, from the Mahabalishwar, that is in Satara districts. So uh, soil in Satara is a red laterite soil, so which gives more iron to the product, and uh, that is also giving the red color to the strawberry. Second is uh, water, a heavy rainfall is there in Mahabalishwar, so uh, this uh, strawberry becomes a juicy in nature. Third is environment, Mahabalishwar is known as a hill station in Maharashtra, it giving a uh, different shape to the uh, strawberry. Fourth is the natural resources. Many rivers like uh, Venna, Krishna starts from the Mahabalishwar. So that is uh, an added advantage to the strawberry and giving more nutritional values to the strawberry. And the fourth, fifth one is the human skill that the farmers from the straw Mahabalishwar started growing that strawberry. So here, uh, the what is the unique trait reflecting through this five element to the agri GI is uh, this, this uh, seeds outside the fruits uh, seeds out of uh, seeds outside of this strawberry, you will find around 200 in numbers. While in other strawberry, you will find only 160. So that is 20% nutritional value is available from these elements, and that's the GI of your products. So uh, then, then natural GIs we have only two natural GIs in India, uh, naturally coming from the earth. So the one is uh, uh, Makarana Marvel, that is uh, uh, basically from the Rajasthan. Uh, and uh, the uniqueness, you will find uh, uh, a 98% plus uh, calcium carbonate content. 
and which is already been used by Taj there in Taj Mahal as well as in Victoria Palace. So indirectly, I would like to mention here, a uh, GI is nothing but our forefathers' patent. They they have identified certain unique product from particular place or cert identified certain place for unique product productions. So it was creation again. It was human creation, and hence it is our forefathers' patents. You can say so. That is what uh, to at natural GIs and manufactured GIs. We have n number of textiles, handicraft, patani sari, banarasi sari, kanchivaram sari, and then uh, samantwadi toys and uh, many even headgears. I have registered the headgears. Uh, uh, I have registered the headgears from Pune. Uh, called Puneri Pagdi, and that Pagdi is. It, I, I must tell you the SME's uh, success story actually for the Puneri Pagdi. That uh, when we registered this Puneri Pagdi in 2008, there were only nine women, and today you will find 100 women are working on that. University of Pune replaced that convocation who with the Puneri Pagdi. And that is what this, you know, you need not to follow the technology. You can protect your ancestors property and you can promote that. So that is also another message. And uh, there are art. I mean, you protect your art, your culture, your heritage. So today, this Puneri Pagdi is known as a symbol of heritage, symbol of culture and symbol of intellectuals. So there are n number of success stories, but I think my time is already 15 plus uh, and then we, we have a lot of success stories. This is how we began in 2007 with the help of students only. I began with the help of students. And then today there are many success on Puneri Pagri, Patani Sari, and many other things. So fortunately, I have had an opportunity to register the 25% of the agriculture GIs in India. And let me also conclude the uh, another line uh, with respect to the GI. GI is not only protecting and promoting the communities, but also pro promoting the nation at large and also protecting the intellectual border of India. I repeat, it also protect the intellectual border of India, like what I had an, I had an opportunity to protect the Doda mushroom from the Kashmir. When we, when we applied for the Doda mushroom there in Kashmir, the price was the Doda mushroom was 35,000 kg. As soon as we applied for the GI, the price should up to the 70,000. And then this entire application was published by the government of India. And there, ITC company found they, 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 the, the mushroom from the Doda is superior than the mushroom they were importing. And the price for the importing mushroom was 2.5 lakhs. So they also uh, now shifting to the Doda mushroom and they will purchase it with 1 lakh rupees per kg. So just imagine 300, three times the price there. The collector, those who the community which are going to the far forest and collecting the mushroom, they have decided not to use the mushroom from themselves, then uh, then to sell it and get the good good uh, revenue on that. So these are the n number of likewise. I have also worked for the West Bengal's Sundarban honey. The ultimate uh, again intention behind that to protect the intellectual border of India because here also Sundarban is sharing the. Uh, bo uh, again, border with the uh, uh, West, uh, West, uh, West Bangladesh, and what had happened to the Basmati should not happen to the other products, other bord borders products, other borders or India's other borders, uh, other unique products from the border, and that's the mission what we begin, and we are working on this mission and uh, continue with that mission. Uh, I hope that uh, what the day will come. We have one single line as a mission li mission line that. GI should be utilized as a social economic. Uh, GI should be utilized as a tool for social economic growth of India. With this submission, I would like to conclude myself. However, there are a number of things, but uh, we can just say uh, GI is really a very good intellectual property for all of us. GI will create many SMEs. GI will create a revenue to the nation. GI will also protect the culture heritage for the nation. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Foremost, it is having a big societal impact. So very exhaustive and very well developed, sir. Thank you, Professor Ganesh, sir. Very well developed. You have synced between the global as well as the local perspective. And it's very thought provoking. We are having a lot of questions to ask. But due to paucity of time, it is not possible right now. And it has been fascinating and very engaging. Sir, now I would like to invite Dr. Birat, sir. To give his final comments and summarize the key points. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rupes. I'm overwhelmed. I really feel like uh, 
being in the company of legal luminaries. And I would conclude by saying, make invisible visible, make invisible visible and add value. That is the essence of what I have understood because all the panelists highlighted a couple of points that it is good to be a good, it is good to be smart, but it is important to be value driven person. Point one. Point two, what I got from Professor Charanjit, Dr. Charanjit in particular, that we must emulate the habit of the Westerners. They know the value of property rights, intellectual property rights. They make best of it. And we also understand there is a need for creating greater awareness in India. There is no dearth of intellectual property in our mind. Creativity has been in the vein of Indians, but there is a crying need to reinvent that, to go get it registered, recognize it, be it in the form of trademark, go for the patent because the kind of comparison we got between India and China is a matter of serious concern that where do we stand? We are aspiring to be to be a world guru and therefore we have got to learn from our neighbors and understand the value of patent, understand the value of trademarks, copyrights, trade secrets and geographical indications. The last point, I, I must say that uh, it was very comprehensive, very, very comprehensive and uh, I'm sure that needs further, no further discussion on that. I'm more interested in knowing the work you have done because that was very interesting. Uh, I value the time. I must say that it was a very fulfilling experience also because of the intervention by Professor Rupesh. He went on raising very pertinent questions from time to time. For example, going to the court takes a lot of, lot of time. So a wise advice came that we should settle the matter out of the court. See. So these are some of the takeaways from the program. I think uh, it has been a value loaded uh, seminar and uh, given the paucity of time, I don't want to further elaborate and uh, deliberate upon it. Over to Professor Rupes with a sense of gratitude to all the eminent panelists for sharing their wisdom, sharing their insight and thoughts this afternoon. Thank you very much. Over to Professor Rupes. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, sir. Let me take this opportunity to thank School School of Management and Federation of World Academy for the webinar. I would like to extend my deepest sense of gratitude to Professor Charanji, sir, Dr. Vikas, sir, Professor Ganesh, sir, and Dr. Gupta, sir, for amazing thought provoking and highly informative. Thank you so much for providing us your valuable time and sharing the perspective and insight, which would be immensely helpful to our audience in their interview. We are highly grateful to Director for School of Management, Dr. Ritin K. Das, sir, uh, Chairman, Dr. D.B.L. Madhukar, sir, Vice Chairman, Dr. Vineshul Gautam, sir, who have pushed us in making the event a grant. Besides, we remain grateful to Prof. Mitra Bhutkiriya, Dean for School of Management, Dr. Ritesh Arora, Dean Academic Services, and special thanks to Ms. Ankita as well as Gautam, sir, for effectively coordinating the event. In addition, we are highly grateful to all the teammates who have directly or indirectly supported us throughout the event. My special thanks to all our faculty members, students, participants, audience for their unwavering attention throughout this presentation. We have learned a lot, sir, and looking forward for more such sessions. Have a wonderful day to all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for everything. Hmm? Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.